Hello and welcome to an introduction to programming using Visual Basic exercises for beginners. In this exercise we are going to create a depreciation calculator. For tax purposes an item may depreciate it over a period of several years or n years. With the straight line depreciation each year the item depreciates by one nth of its value. With double declining balance method of depreciation each year the item depreciates by two nth of its value at the beginning of that year. In its final year it is depreciated by its value at the beginning of the year. In other words, if at the beginning of the final year the value is say $200, at the end of that year it will be zero. It will depreciate all the way down to zero. We are to write a program that performs the following. Requests a description of the item, the year of purchase, the cost of the item, the number of the years to be depreciated or estimated life and the method of depreciation. And the method of depreciation should be chosen by clicking on one of the two buttons. And second, we are to display a year by year description of the depreciation. In other words, it's going to be a table that will have every year and the value of depreciation for that year listed in a list box. Here's our form. We are going to enter the description of the item, the cost, the year of the purchase and the estimated life and we have two buttons, one that will calculate the straight line method and one that calculates the double declining balance method and the output will be displayed in the list box. So I am in Visual Studio 2015, here is my form, let's start coding. So I'll double click the straight line method first and we need to declare a few variables. Since we are having two buttons and each of them calculates different way of the depreciation we can include the variables from the input in a form level or in a class level and that way we don't have to keep passing them back and forth into our functions and subroutines but instead have access to them throughout the form. So I'm going to create four variables, one for the item description, one for the purchase year, one for the cost of the item and one for the number of years and these are the input values from the user. Okay so here are my variables. And now we need to create a function that will validate the input. And if the input is valid, the function will return true. Otherwise, it will display a message box for invalid input and return false. And we can use a try parse function to assign values to our purchase year and number years and cost because those need to be numbers. So we will do an integer dot try parse for the purchase year and numbers and double dot try parse for the cost. And we just have to make sure that the item description was entered since it's a string. We'll simply check if any value was entered at all. So here is my validate input function. I assign a value from the text box to my item description and then I check whether it's empty and I'll check if I can try parse purchase year as an integer and also the number of years as an integer and the cost as double. And if I can do all that and the item description is not empty, then we can return true. The input is valid. Otherwise, we can simply display a message box that the input is invalid and return false. So this is my complete validate input function. We don't have to pass anything as arguments because again, our variables that we are checking are form level. So we have access to them within our function and we are actually assigning the values to these variables straight in our try parse and also from here where the item description has an assigned value from the text box txt description. Alright so now when we have our validation ready we can go to our button click event and simply do an if statement by calling the function and check if true is returned and if it is we can start performing the actual calculation. So we will do if our validate input is a true then we will do what we need to do to calculate the straight method of the depreciation. And we can go to our form level here and click the double declining balance method and we can do the same thing. We can call the validate input and if everything's okay we can start performing the calculation there as well. So we have two different ways to calculate the depreciation However, they are very similar. So I'm going to create one sub procedure that will perform the calculations and that's going to be one extra sub procedure that will create the heading. The heading simply will say the description, the year of purchase, cost and estimated life. Those are the items that are being entered 
as an input by the user and they don't change. They will be the same for either of the depreciation methods. The only thing that is going to be changing is that the straight line depreciation is one nth of its value and uh, the double is two over n of the value. So that's why we can have the same sub procedure and simply determine which depreciation is being calculated and adjust the formula accordingly. However, the headings as well as the basic principle of the calculation remains the same. So I'm going to first create the show headings sub procedure that will, like I said, will show the description, year of purchase, cost and estimated life. And to show the headings, we'll simply use the items.add method for our list box. So we have our items.add for the description and we'll add the description. We have the purchase year, we have the cost that we're formatting to currency with the to string method and we have the years, which is the estimated life. So now we have to decide how to find out which method of depreciation is being used. And to do that, we can simply pass a value of one or two as an argument to this uh, show heading sub procedure, one being the first straight line method and two being the double method. So I'm passing the method as an integer and that will be passed from the button straight click event and double click event. And that way we will be able to use an if statement to determine which one is actually being used. So we will do if the method equals one, then it's a straight line. So if it's a straight line, we can simply display the LST output that items that add, and we can add the method being a straight line. Otherwise the method is going to be the double declining balance. So here's my complete sub procedure for the headings. Again, we display in the description years and cost and estimated life. And then based on what method is being used, we pass it as an argument. We display method straight line or method double declining balance. And at the end, we'll also add an empty line to our list box. And after that line, we will actually display the calculations. So now we are ready to display the table of the depreciation for each of the two different methods of depreciation. And I'm going to create a sub procedure that will be used for that. And within our sub procedure, I'm going to create a variable called depreciation, which is going to be a double. And that's going to be the value of depreciation for each of the year. Obviously, to calculate the years, we have to loop through each of the years. So now, before we show any table, we want to clear the list box in case there was already any values from previous clicks. And after we clear the list box, we call the show headings sub procedure to display the headings first before we display the calculations. And as an argument, it's asking for the method that is going to be used, whether it's the straight line or the double declining balance. So we will simply pass an integer to it. However, we don't have it here. The integer is going to be passed to our show table sub procedure. So whenever we call the sub procedure show table, we will pass the method to it. And we will pass that method further down to the show headings. All right, so after we display our headings, we can start displaying the values and years for each of the depreciation method, depending on which one is being calculated. Now the difference between these two methods is that the straight line has a constant value of depreciation. That means that the depreciation doesn't change throughout the year. If the depreciation value is, let's say $200 the first year, then it is also $200 the second year and the third year, all the way down to the last year when it depreciates down to zero. Now double declining balance method has these values change throughout the year it depreciates differently the first year than it dep depreciates the second year. And it again depreciates differently the third year and all the way down to the final year when it depreciates down to zero. And one more thing to remember is that in the final year for either of these methods, the depreciated value is the same value as it is at the beginning of the year. So we'll simply take the remaining value of the item and depreciate it down to zero for both of these methods. So because the straight line method is a constant, in other words, it doesn't change throughout the years, we are not going to calculate it within the loop, but instead we are going to calculate it before we are going to display the values in our loop. So I'm going to create a variable called value, and I'm going to assign an initial value 
of the cost, which is the purchase price of the item. And now we need to determine which method is being used. So I'm going to use an if statement. And if the method being used is straight line, in other words, if the method equals one, then we perform the calculation for the straight line. So now, before I perform the calculation, I need to hold the value or the result of the calculation in another variable. So above the if statement, I'm going to create another variable and I call it straight line, and it's going to be a double. So now, if this uh, method is straight line, I'm going to use straight line equals, and the formula was one over the number of years, and we are going to multiply it by the original value of the item or the purchase price. So once we calculate a straight line depreciation, it doesn't change. Whatever the value is here, it's going to be every single year. So now we can create a loop and loop from year one, which would be the default year, all the way to the number of years that the user entered. And within this loop, we have to make sure that we are not at the final year. Remember, the final year depreciation is simply the same value as it's at the beginning of the year. And the easiest way to check whether we are at the final year is to make sure that we are not at the final year. So if a year is not the number of years, which is the final year, or the number of years that the user entered, then we can perform the calculations. If we are at the final year, then we'll simply assign the depreciation equals value. Whatever the final value is, that's going to be the value of our depreciation. So if it is not the final year, then we have to again determine whether this is a straight line or double declining, because as we mentioned before, straight line is already calculated, while double declining method has to be calculated for each of the years. So we will simply do an if statement again. And if the method is one or straight line, then our depreciation will remain constant. So it will simply equal the value that we calculated above in the straight line variable. If it is not method one, in other words, it's the method two, then a depreciation will equal the formula, which was the two over the number of years. And again, we'll multiply it by the cost. However, this is not going to be the cost of the original item, but the cost of the value or the value that is being changed throughout the years. So now after the if statement, but still within the loop, we are going to assign a new value to our value variable. Remember at the beginning, we assigned the value of cost, which was the original purchase price. So we are going to simply deduct the depreciation from the current value of the value variable. So our value equals the value minus the depreciation. So when it comes to the next year, the value changes and so will the depreciation for the double decline. However, it will have no effect on the straight line because we are using the variable that was already calculated before the for loop. All right, so this is our calculations. There's one more thing we should do, and that is to calculate the total depreciation because we are going to display that at the end. I'm going to go above here and create a variable, total depreciation, and it's going to be a double and I'm going to initialize it to zero. So now, after our if statement, I can just keep adding to it the actual value of depreciation. So our total depreciation will plus equal the depreciation calculated throughout the years. So now, still within our loop, and actually before the value is being calculated, we need to display the results. And we have to do it before the value is being changed. Otherwise, we would display the value that is already changed. We need to display the value that is still valid for this particular block of code. And after we display it, we'll assign a new value and go back to our for loop. So after our total depreciation, but before the value, we can start displaying the results into our list box. And the first thing I'm going to display is the value at the beginning of each year. In other words, I'm going to display the year, like let's say 2012, and the value of the item. And to display the year, it's basically the purchase year plus whatever the year we are here. So let's say the purchase year is 2012. I'll add a one to it, and it's going to be the next year, 2013. And then next one will be year equals two. So two plus 2012 
equals 2014 and so forth. So I will do a precious year plus the year, it's the year within our loop. However, I also want to display the beginning purchase year. So I have to go and do minus one. Again, if the year for the purchase is 2012 and I'll add one to it, I would start from the next year, 2013, but I want to start from actual 2012. So minus one will give me that. And then year equals two within the next iteration, two plus 2012 is 2014, minus one is 2013. So I will have them in consecutive order. And now I can display the actual value. So after I display the year, I'll display the value and convert it to currency using the to string. The next thing I'm going to display the amount of depreciation in that year. So I'll use the same formula for the year. And this time I'm going to display instead of value, the actual depreciation. The value is the value of the item. The depreciation is the depreciation of the item. So here's my amount of depreciation. Again, the same year and the depreciation value. And at the end, I'll display the total depreciation that we calculated above. So here my value at the beginning, I have the amount of depreciation at that year, and I have the total depreciation at the end of that year. And I'm going to add an empty line just so we can uh, have a little break. So this is our show table. So now we can simply call that within our if valid input from both of the buttons and pass the value of the method that we are using. So we will do the show table and pass the method one from our straight button click event. And we will call the show table and pass the method two from our double depreciation click event. So this is all the code. Let's run it and see. So let's say the item is computer and let's say the cost is $1,500. The year of purchase is 2012 and the estimated life five years. So a straight line, here's the header, description computer and everything is there. It's a straight line method. And you can see that the straight line method has the amount of depreciation in 2012, which is the purchase year, $300, then it's $300 for the 2013, 14, 15, and 16 is the last year of the depreciation. And you can see that the depreciation amount does not change. It's $300 each year. If I click double decline balance method, you can see that the method used is double declining balance. It's again five years estimated life. And you can see that the amount of depreciation changes. There's $600 in 2012, 360 in 2013, all the way to $194.40, which you can see is the same amount as the value at the beginning. Remember the last year, the depreciation value is the same as the value at the beginning of the year. And the total depreciation is $1,500, which was the cost of the computer. So at the end of the 2016. So these values of depreciation are being added correctly for both of these methods. You can see that the total depreciation for the straight line is $1,500 as well in 2016. So this is working correctly. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in the next video.